Okay, so now we are gonna really show Cat Plus Loss. So we're gonna start with the second one, but before that, we need to do some preliminaries, in particular of setting up the axis because it's not too easy. This problem is not an easy problem at all. Okay, I must say that at least for this section, you're gonna go through a gauntlet of differentiating and algebraic expression. So I hope that you read the mathematics carefully and you're able to understand or at least confirm what I'm writing. Okay, so the problem is that we need to set up the problem that we are revolving around the sun. Okay, so the sun is over here and let's just say it's a mass of m. Okay, and then the earth is somewhere over here and we'll just put it as small m over here. Now, as we know, or at least the laws tell us that it's an elliptical orbit. Okay, so the orbit goes around like this. Okay, now here comes the problem, the initial problem. You see, we got the x, y coordinates over here. However, it's very difficult to analyze the problem because you know we don't even have the equation of the ellipses, or at least we can't confirm or define the equation of the ellipses. Okay, but that shouldn't that that can be bypassed quite easily by defining a coordinate system that is convenient for us to use. Okay, now we're dealing with forces as Newton's law of gravitation, which I'll probably write here to start things off with. Force equals to MA, and he said that the force attracts two bodies. So if you take a standard course of mechanics, you will know that the, the coordinate axis that we want to define is best that it's parallel to the direction of the force and, and perpendicular so we can resolve the vectors. What I mean by that, let's just take the position vector from the origin to a point M as R. Okay? We'll take the position vector R like that. Okay, because in doing so, whatever forces okay, that, that is on M, we can resolve it in this direction like this, okay? Going like this and going like this over here. Now this is good, okay? This is good because it enables us to really eliminate forces that we don't need, okay? Or at least it enables us to compare forces fairly easy. Okay, so position vector of R goes like that, okay? And then we need to define what which direction the position vector is. So the position vector is theta. Okay, now I'm gonna start by writing this. Okay, R the position vector R, right, is given by a scalar multiple of UR. Okay, what is UR? UR is simply the unit vector that is parallel to the position vector, like so. You are like that. Okay. So notice that as the planet moves, the coordinate system also moves with the planet, which is really what we want because that way the force that is directed towards the sun can be easily calculated or easily analyzed. Okay. So the unit vector U R goes in parallel to the position vector R. Okay. Then later we can write U R as this. Okay. Bear in mind that we got theta over there. Okay. U R would be given as cosine i cosine theta i plus sine theta j okay we are j is i is going in here j is going up okay we got the thing like that now this doesn't really complete a coordinate axis okay because we need the perpendicular one the mutually perpendicular coordinate axis which goes like this like this. so so if u r is like that the unit vector okay unit vector that is along r we define u theta as a unit vector perpendicular to u r Okay, and using theta now becomes over here, and using using basic trigonometry, we see that u theta okay is equal to minus i sine theta plus j sorry plus minus sine theta i plus cosine theta j. Okay, so now we've got our coordinate axis u r and u theta forming like that, and it moves along as the planet moves around the orbit. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is that let's just differentiate the two and see what we got. Well, I didn't know what we would get, okay, and it's something quite convenient for us, okay. If I differentiate u r with respect to u theta, okay, notice that cosine will go into minus sine, sine will go into cosine. You see that? We're just going from here to here. So basically, I can write this as u theta, okay? Nice and convenient, okay. U, differentiate u theta with respect to theta is equal to minus u r, okay? So that's the same thing, just Check it that way. Now, what is this? You might say, well, it's just simply the rate of change of the direction vector, okay, the coordinate axis with a change in theta. That's all it says. But that is not as important as what I'm gonna do next, okay? What I'm gonna do next is that I'm going to differentiate the two with respect to time, okay? I'm gonna differentiate u r and u theta with respect to time. Now, why is that useful? Because remember, we're dealing with acceleration and we're dealing with obviously velocity and we may need okay those derivatives which we, we will later okay so let's let's see what we got okay differentiate u r with respect to time 
Okay, now what I can do is that I can do chain rule, okay, by differentiating ur with respect to theta first multiplied by d theta dt, which we know using the substitution as u not u theta d theta dt. Okay, now following suit, okay, differentiate u theta with respect to time, I will get minus ur d theta dt, just using the substitution like I did before. Okay, these two are very important, so I'm going to write them up here. Okay, d theta is equal to u theta, sorry, u r, u theta dot with d theta dt, and then differentiate u theta with respect to time is equal to minus u r d theta dt. Okay, we are off to a pretty good start, and we're having those formulas right there. So now that is what we got, the time derivatives okay, of the derivatives of the coordinates with respect to time. So next is that knowing that we have to anticipate that Newton's universal law of gravitation is gonna come in f equals to ma, we will need that acceleration component over here. Now we're dealing with vectors, that means we would have to differentiate accordingly, accordingly in a in a vector calculus way. Go check my vector calculus if you are interested. Okay.